In legal terms, do you know what it is to be a reasonable human? Do you consider yourself a reasonable human? <laughs> According to the Oxford Law Dictionary, or legal terms, a reasonable human is a fictional character. And if you consider yourself a fictional character, I think that it is, well, honestly fitting reason being a thing that is in itself a fictional concept. See, both the reasonable human and reason itself is conclusive. It concludes. It passes a final judgment. I reason that this is right or wrong. Truth or fiction. Because of the evidence placed before me. In my mind... I've made it up, and reason is ultimately the conclusion of why. So, a reasonable human, well... That's just the why posed to a person who is the ideal human, the Superman, if you will. who's having a perfect day, has no bias, no perspective. That's the reasonable human. And um, that is a helpful thing to have in a court of law. Because it forces the Jurors, the, uh, well, everyone present, honestly, to note that they themselves cannot be considered a reasonable human being. No matter what sort of day they're having. If they're having a great day, they're biased because they're wearing that lens. Your lens is always dirty. There is no right thought. <laughs> Nothing is conclusive. Now, why are we held to a standard that, well, the judge, jury, and executioners are, well, admittedly, self-admittedly, not to par with? 
Well, it's a matter of fault, a matter of blame. Because while it is not okay, fuck up, it's perfectly okay to be able to fuck up. To be inclined to fuck up. And a fuck up, well, has consequences. And our... Sorry. Our system of checks and balances, well, has this thing called... Fairness. Another abstract concept. Another conclusion. Fortunately, we're not expected to be fair. But consequences are expected to be meet out fairly. So where there is a fuck up that is consequent on someone who has really nothing to do with the fuck up having been committed is not responsible for the fuck up well guess what yeah he is responsible get to be held to the standard of a fucking reasonable human being um okay um these are gods if you will all these abstract concepts they are facets of yourself compartmentalized apart from thyself. And concluded to their logical extremes. A man is. A complicated thing. And compartmentalization, well, it's fairly automatic in the sense that, well, we, we, we've we evolved past the um, state of being a whole. And we are not... Born whole, even. We are born close to whole. We are born with what's called an id. That's an identity. Apart from a personality. The id... Well, that is the will to live. It's um, more an objective given a sentience. Let me rephrase that. It is the objective taken on by our sentience. Immediately upon having attained it, and shortly thereafter, our first experiences as a conscious being are experienced, judged. Liked, disliked, and catalogued. That cataloging system, as you grow older, 
becomes more and more complex. You might have like dislike to begin with. Then under those categories, you have some subcategories. So these are the compartmentalizations that began. These compartmentalizations create a pattern A synaptic cluster that, as time goes on, becomes more and more malleable. Closer and closer to conclusive. Closer and closer to conclusion, I should say. And as you come closer to co and closer to conclusion, well, it begins to form um, your conscious experience become becomes outweighed by. The system you have organized as a sentience conscious being. It becomes an autonomic function and it should correlate with reality. So long as you were actually perceiving reality. So long as you weren't subject to gaslighting. And other such forms of manipulation. So long as you weren't scarred. Scarred by an abnormally divergent extremist of reality. These traumas may heal. But their memories do not, and the input to our conscious experience will always loathe the patterns similar to the others and though uh, and, and will you will consciously be like everything is okay you'll consciously overcome these fears but fears are always there once created what is fears really the, though the fears of change really too much change all at once. It's not necessarily that there's any boogeyman out there. Evil, I mean, change is God. God is changing. The world is too, so I mean, just growth. Too much growth all at once and well. You must grow at a balanced rate.
the proportion can be traumatic. Like, for example, if your heart grew ten times the speed as it's the cavity that it contains it with. Kill ya. And the pat. Oh, that's advice, you monk. Chitty. And, and, well, let's say you had, you had this problem. Your heart's growing super fast. Your body's not. This would traumatize you. But let's say they caught on and they saved your life. They, they um, expand your chest cavity with a fucking artificially, you know, bionic. Well, not by all, because you know, what kind of movement does your chest cavity actually have to make, so, per se? But, you know, you'd still have this conscious um, awareness of your beat in heart. It would never become quite an autonomic, as it would be never apart from your um, conscious experience. Every beat you'd be monitoring to see if it's a, a normal beat or is it going to push through your ribs. Now this concern, the conscious, is an autonomic function. As are, well, all of your functions. You autonomically, the day you're born, experience thyself. Well, so perhaps prior to that, I do not. I do not say, for each aspect of reality is well. Sentience is uh, subjective in terms. I don't know. It's not objective, since it's all the same for everybody. But all your functions are autonomic. Because your autonomic function, well, that's the first. Your autonomic mind, I sh brain, I should say, is the one you're born with. And uh, its first experience is of thyself and, well, of the world. Of thyself, dynamic to the world, the world dynamic to thyself. Rarely can it be said that a man ever puts the world first in the prior, in the sense of experience. You're experiencing yourself in the world, not the world in you. So your function to autonomic, your conscious experience, well, that's merely that. So, who are you really? You're a reflection. A retrospective reflection. A rec reflection. Cast upon a mirror.
and you are seeing. You're a memory. Consciously, anyway, your conscious experience, or experience, or no, 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 my bad. So, who are you then? Well, you are your autonomic brain, your identity, not your personality. Your personality is a reflection. It's a thought form, but a thought form reflection. Of you dynamic to reality. You, your pattern, your your history, your sapiens. And only when acting out of absolute necessity. To avoid trauma, is your personality ever consciously experiencing the same thing as your autonomic brain? Because your autonomic brain would experience reality undiluted apart from itself. Whilst experiencing or whilst keeping in mind an image built of itself prior. You experience thyself at the same time as creating this personality, as interacting with reality. But the interaction's already been done. You're just uh, reflecting it back at yourself, at your autonomic brain. So this thought form, this personality that is apart from your identity, is, in fact, abstract. You Sorry, he got dark quick. The candle went out. Um, you are focus bright. Mm. Con- your your cognitive brain that you uphold so high doesn't exist. It's an abstract. It's a tool. That's why it um, originates from the word cog. Cognitive. Cog. In it live. It is you. Cog in it live. You're not your conscious experience. Your conscious experience is a abstract justification.
and or judgment passed upon thine own actions. It's a memory. Reflection. It's a... How'd I do? Ah, nah. Let's see. It becomes alive. It becomes alive in the sense that <laughs> to more accurately experience reality and thyself. To more accurately see thyself, thou must give well. That abstract reflection more of thyself, thy life. Room, more the more more room. More functions. Tell really only the vital functions and the traumas. Are the things that your personality gets to handle? That your conscious experience gets to handle? Or what? Or what? Your urge gets to handle the actual self. Now, you know. That's in the reflection, though. Of course, it handles all of it. And that's like the memory. It chooses the reality you have for it. Based on In the present, as you experience, it, you, next, input of Reality. If that one's heavy, well, then now you are experiencing maybe missing some pieces. It's a uh, why if you're stressed out? Something's missing. You're not experiencing reality as it is. Hey, so it's better not to be stressed out about your build a personality. If you're gonna be a personality, hey, stop. Oh, no, it is well. Really nice to be, I think. That's who you actually are. So to reconcile with the, um, the source, the Father. How do you do that? From self-aware. Sentience is not self-awareness. What? Because self-awareness is experienced. Sentience is the memory, or is the experience of being self-aware, but actually being self-aware
that is remembering that that experience is outside of your control. You're along for the ride. Become a good tool. Serve thy God, thy source. Thy autonomic unconscious brain. How can you stress over that? Your job's easy. Better no interest the outcome because if there's an experience to be had Clearly, you're still kicking. The God is still alive. And that's why nobody experiences dying. Because when you're dead, you're dead. No consciousness left to experience it. And experience is retrospect. So what you are, are sentient of Who you, so what your personality is sentient of, I should say, your mind is sapient of. It knows what it looks like. The whole world about you. Is it something is that something you experience apart from you? Or merely a memory that I mean to you. The actions that made you. And if the actions made you, then well, if, you are actions, you are what you're doing.